Hello and welcome. Today we will be talking about the multivariable Taylor series. And the way I figured out how to do this was actually a mathematics stack exchange post. So I will, so um, thank you to whoever did this and uh, let's proceed. So my presentation is an interpretation of this post. So there are two keys to generalizing the 1D Taylor series to multiple dimensions. The first key over here is to think in terms of position vector inputs to functions. The second key is the directional derivative. And I'll explain that more. Let's begin with 3D functions in which the domain is on the xy plane. So here is the domain. For a given input expressed as a position vector, x is equal to xy, we have a scalar output, which is f of x. But what if we only want the z values corresponding to a single slice in the domain? Then we would have a 2D function once again. And we would have z is equal to f of t, where t is this new axis, in the direction of the q vector, and it'll be equal to f of uh, q scaled by t. But we can also center the t-axis anywhere we want. This scaling and addition enables us to define any slice within this domain. So we have z is equal to f of t, which is actually equal to f of p naught plus q t. So p naught is where we start the t axis, and then we scale um, this directional vector q by t to obtain all values on the t axis. So to illustrate my point further, for a given p naught, we had we can get any expansion in any direction, and you'll see that this will be the Taylor series of expansion in any direction given a p naught and a q. So now let's expand f of t with the 1D Taylor series using the general formula for the 1D Taylor series. Now if we expand f of t with the 1D Taylor series centered at t is equal to 0 or fp naught, then we have z is equal to f of t which is equal to all that stuff right there up to the second order term. And there's more terms, but uh, we'll ignore those for now. Uh, we have f of t is actually equal to f of p naught plus q t, like we had earlier. And that gives a full description of that t axis relative to the xy coordinate system. So we have that, and for the first term, it's pretty simple. We just have f of p naught. But for the second term, it's a bit more difficult. So we end up getting to the directional derivative, but uh, how exactly do we do that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> just kidding, I do know. Uh, we'll show that later. But let's show that second term first, which is the directional derivative of the directional derivative. And once again, let's highlight this term over here. So how do we get that? Well, we'll see in the next slide. All right, so how exactly is this true? I'll show you exactly how using a little bit of geometry. All right, so we have this setup over here. And it's a linear function where we have a point A and B expressed as vectors, and we have the corresponding outputs f of A and f of B. Now, uh, we'll define D is equal to B minus A, uh, which is that purple vector right there in the diagram. And the diff of D we will define as f of B minus f of A. So that is the difference between these outputs. 
So that is equal to mb plus c minus ma plus c uh, because this is a linear function. You know, y is equal to mx plus b. That's what I'm using there. Uh, that's equal to m times b minus a, which is equal to m times d. Now, uh, now we have the diff of, if you scale the input d, then the diff of, uh, you know, c, d, oh, uh, whoops, <laughs> whoops, um, I meant to say uh, the diff of, um, of e, d, actually, is equal to m, e, d, which is equal to uh, e, m, d, which is equal to e times the diff of d. So that means that if we scale the input vector, then we scale the output difference by the same factor. And this is important to remember um, in the next slide. All right, so we have a setup here, and this is the domain. As h approaches zero, we get linear functions between these three points specified here by those gray spheres. So we have f prime of p naught plus qk is equal to um, the limit as, uh, you know, that, that limit right there as h approaches zero, uh, as you could see in the diagram. Then we get that stuff. We could actually decompose this into the um, into if if you think of the hmm, how do I say this? Oh yeah, you you can just decompose it like that. Uh, and remember from the previous slide, for linear functions, scaling the input between two points in the domain scales the difference between the two corresponding outputs by the same factor. So since we have hqx and hqy. Uh, we're actually scaling the the partial derivatives by qx and qy. So we get this. Right there. And we're actually evalu evaluating these partial derivatives of p, which is just some, you know, some dummy vector. <laughs> um, we're actually evaluating them at the specified points right there, as you can see in the diagram. So we have this over here. Uh, it's actually equal to that. Then we have, um, we can actually replace that limit as h approaches zero of h q x x bar, uh, or sorry, x hat, with, um, with a zero, because as h approaches zero, uh, that term right there approaches zero too. Uh, and then we could think of this in terms of the dot product of these two vectors. And we could think of that as uh, the vector q, uh, sorry, the vector q dotted with the uh, gradients of f of p, where p is a dummy vector, uh, evaluated at p is equal to p naught plus qk, right there. And so we get that right there. Because we're evaluating at k is equal to zero, uh, we're gonna get uh, the dot product between the q and gradient vectors evaluated at p is equal to p naught which is the equivalent of k is equal to zero. And so we will make the following substitutions where p naught will actually be equal to the position vector of x naught comma y naught. Uh, q will be equal to x minus x naught comma y minus y naught vector. And t we will set to one. And so if we do this, then we'll get f of x comma y uh, position vector. So we'll have the um, the function as a function of 
x and y. And here's how we interpret this. Um, so basically, you have the p naught vector. That's where the series, or sorry, the expansion is centered. And you could have any q vector. We set the q vector to x minus x naught comma y minus y naught, meaning that it's going to be a function of x and y. So it's going to be able to, um, it's going to be able, that q vector is going to be able to be anything really. And t is going to be equal to 1. So, you know, we don't really have to have a t right there because the q will already span the entire domain according to x and y. All right, so there's the multivariable Taylor series expansion up to the third term. And for the rest of the terms, we just uh, follow that same pattern right there that we've been following. Pretty cool. And for a three-dimensional domain, or four dimensions in total, we add those red terms right there. So essentially, this idea works for any number of dimensions. It's just the idea that within the domain, we draw a vector from the origin to a point and take 1D slices in all possible directions. This is because Q, that Q direction vector, is a function of X and Y. So it spans all possible directions and all possible points. We can choose the location from which these n-dimensional radial lines originate with the p naught vector. This enables us to get local approximations of the MISO, or multiple input single output function, anywhere in the domain we desire. All right, so that is the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.